Hello, you guys, and welcome to We're Podding This Together. It is a podcast where we are basically a book club for movies. I'm Brandon. I'm Lori. All right, guys, grab your favorite animal and please avoid any air parasites because today we're watching Animorphs. I don't know about this. Are you better than IMDb saying? I think it's cute. Uh, If I were to describe this, well, we watched, first of all, it was season one, episode one, and the title of it was like, I am Jake or something like that. I am Jake. Yeah, I figured we'd just start from the beginning because this would be confusing if you didn't, probably. If I were to describe this in one sentence, I would say teenager Tobias realizes he has more than platonic feelings for animals. Oh, so it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be, but like that was my over, that's what I got from this episode is that Tobias was like eyeing everything a little bit too friendly. Yeah, he sure was. What if I like it too much? Mm. Okay, buddy, careful. Mine would be horse girl gets to live her fantasy of being a horse. Being a horse would be pretty great, but they're scared of everything. Yeah. And you know that a horse girl was watching this at one point just saying like, I want to be a horse. She was just going and like crafting her own little glowing cubes and touching them and like hoping for the best. Yeah, all it takes is two hours, and I can be a horse forever? Easy. But the real IMDb bio is five kids and an alien with the ability to turn into any beast they touch versus an army of parasitic aliens who are slowly infiltrating Earth. Did you have any idea what this show was about? Because you never have seen this. I just know the... I I don't even know if I realized it was a show until very recently. Like, I knew the Scholastic books with the covers where it would be like girl turning into crow or whatever and it showed like yeah. the laps on the cover but i don't i, I ne- definitely never saw it i don't even know if i knew it existed okay wow i was obsessed with this as a, as a kid like this was kind of like oh my gosh what is that one show <laughs> with the outer space and they're on a boat a boat ship what oh gosh what give me give me an era 90s um too? like 2000s like 2005s maybe People turned in, like, aliens, like, pretended to be people. Battlestar Galactica? Battlestar Galactica. Oh, my God. This is basically, like, Battlestar Galactica. Isn't that, though, like, where there were androids or whatever pretending to be? I've only played the board game. I haven't watched the show. But (laughs) they're similar. It was, like, they were disguising as humans to try to take over the ship and, like, cause harm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not yeah. all <laughs> what's happening here. That's what's happening here, is that the little ear guys, aliens, go into oh, people's brains okay. and so take like, them over. I thought you meant like the animorphing. I'm like, I feel like you watched the different no. battle star. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's like a one-to-one, but it's like that idea for kids. It's like your intro to like sci-fi, cool universes. And basically, I made you watch this because A, I thought you'd love it. B, this was like the only opportunity I felt like I really had to have somebody talk about Animorphs with me. I'm going to admit, I'm probably not the right audience for this. I increasingly have become uncomfortable with shows where animals are featured predom- prominently. Yeah. So that made me not love it a lot, but at least they weren't like talking animals. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't yeah. love that. So that mean, but, but the impression that I got was that I started watching non-children's like media too early because I can feel the reason that I probably didn't like this if I had ever seen that as a kid was because I was already watching Buffy. Oh, and like that's this probably fair. first episode gave me vibes of like season one Buffy. That's just like not great. Yeah. Well, not even that. The plots are just like, the plots aren't similar, but the vibe is the same. So if I were yeah. presented with watch Buffy or watch this as a kid, I'd be like, vampires are cooler than animals. I'm gonna watch that. Um, I don't know. I think aliens are cooler than vampires. Mm, I, I'm not a big like alien sci-fi person either. I'm just like the complete wrong audience for this. I yeah, like. you and I are like very close, except for I branch out into like enjoying alien stuff. Like, do you like the X-Files? Yes. Okay, see, you're getting there. <laughs> the theme song to this though, there was like the do-do-do-do, like it kept on sounding like the intro to X-Files. 
Yeah, it's intense. I had it stuck in my head and then now all of a sudden it's out and I can't remember how it goes. Do, 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 do. That's X-Files. Do, 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 do. I like Star Trek. There's aliens in that. I don't even like Star Trek. Not Next Gen? We, no. We, I like some of the new movies. We just do not intertwine with a I lot feel of like these. if you like this, you should go back. It's on Netflix and watch Star Trek Next Generation. Honestly, I've been told that a lot that I need to watch it. The um, movies don't count. I don't like the, the what is it, J.J. Abrams or something? Yeah. Those movies are like not the same it. vibe as the series. Yeah. Right. The thing about these books, do you remember, is flipping through them. And on the bottom, it was a, uh, it was like a time lapse. What is it called? Stop motion thing? Oh, like when a you flip, flip book. Through? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a flip book with this, the person going to an animal. I never read the books either. But no, you don't have to read them to do it. You book, pick it up and flip it open. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why these never, maybe you're a year older than me. Maybe it was like that. Maybe they were cooler like when I was a year too young to read them or something. Because the lot can change for kids in a year. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was it. Yeah, the time that this show happened, I don't know about the books, but we had this program at my school where you would read books and then take like a reading comprehension test on a computer, which at the time was like next mm-hmm. level. And then you'd get, a, they were called AR points. We had AR. Yeah. And then like we had a board where it was whoever had the most AR points. Yeah. Like just got everybody to like applaud. It was like the only time it was cool to be really smart in grade school because usually it was kind of like a nerd. I was like always number one or number two. And so like I feel like Animorphs wouldn't have been worth that many points. Exactly. Animorphs would have been like worth one point. Mm-mm. Whereas Harry Potter would have been worth like eight points. Goblet of Fire was worth like 16 points or 20 points or something insane Jesus. because it was so long. Yeah, exactly. So reading one of these for a point like wasn't worth taking the test. Please, that's not worth my time. I have more important things to do. (laughs) I remember I read 1984 only because it was like, if I just read this one book, I'll be done for the year. Wait, how many, what grade were you in when they did AR? (laughs) Like, I mean, we had to do AR through senior year. Really? We only had it for fourth grade. I wish they had kept doing it. Oh my God. We had to do it every year of my life. Every semester it would roll over too. That would be my shit. I mean, it was fun, but at some points it gets old when you're like every semester you're like, ugh, I don't want to read right now. I'm on like year four of Goodreads where it's like the only thing keeping me going where I'm like, I'm going to read a hundred books. Can't get back on. I have to show everybody. Yeah. You, man, you need to go to Loop City High School. I'll just go there now. <laughs> I'll just go there. <laughs> They're like, there's a yeah. quarantine. Nobody's here. Please leave. <laughs> Please leave. I just hold school to myself. Clearly 30 years old. Where are the Animorphs books? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So it starts out, and Jake is video blogging. We call it vlogging now. I guess he would have been like recording it on a like v- VHS handy yeah. cam thing that way like if he dies people can find it no because like his whole thing is like i can't tell you my last name so if he died like he wouldn't care about that maybe but he wants to protect his friends that's it yeah that's the canon uh-huh um, okay i always thought the coolest part about this was you didn't know where he was and he's like it could be your town and i'm like obviously it's not my town because i know every single person in my town but i love the idea that like this could be anywhere this is so cool it's so like it's kind of spooky and creepy. Especially like you would have been the age when this came out that like, well, you knew everybody in your town, but you weren't, you were in grade school, not high school. So you could be like, it could be one of the big kids that I don't know as well. Yeah. It could be the town over. It could be anywhere. I love that. And then he learns that there are aliens coming to earth and they're like fighting and it's freaking nuts. I didn't know it was about aliens. I had forgotten it was about aliens (laughs) until I started watching it. Hold on. I'm going to solve a big mystery for you. Okay. It was filmed in Toronto. This happened in Toronto. That was going to be one of my two truths in no. a goof. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, know. it was pretty obvious that they were Canadian with their. Yeah. With yeah, everything. This is, this is a little like, are you afraid of the dark typecasting, you know? Was this on Nickelodeon? Yes. Okay. I don't know what else it would be on. It wouldn't fit on. Maybe like CW. I could see it yeah. being a CW show. Anyway, yeah, there's aliens. That arcade at the beginning was pretty dope. It was like an alien arcade. Yeah, it was like a... Hello like, with the themes. They had computers, so it looked like it could be like a land party center, which were a thing. I think they're still a thing, but they were playing video games that you had to put coins into. It was like a really weird computer arcade. It looks like the people from the Hackers movie just like left their set and were like, whoever else <laughs> yeah, needs this, 
have fun. <laughs> yeah, so they're playing video games. I mean, it's not that important other than just to show that they're like best friends hanging out, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden, the poor dog that I don't know why he was allowed in an arcade. Especially in 1998. I feel like now places are more liberal with letting pups in, but. Oh, pups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so the pup runs away and he like finds a freaking alien crash site and all the kids follow him there. And was then they he... find this really weird kid. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. I was just thinking because like I was obviously like I was like, okay, this dog is obviously here. That way they have like an animal around that they can change into. Yeah. But do you think he was sent there by the alien man to lead them to the alien for help? I don't think so. I think it was just coincidence or okay. circumstance. Or like the alien rolled around in like meat juice. Yeah, maybe. Maybe all aliens smell like hot dogs. Did you see that Reddit post that if hot dogs are just like grinded meat in a casing, anytime we eat meat, we are hot dogs? Gross. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> no, I know. It got like 100,000 upvotes. The alien gives a very long monologue. Oh, this poor alien. He's fuzzy though. He looks like the bottom of Chuck Taylor's. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> the bottom of Chuck Taylors are like fuzzy, but they're also kind of like rubbery. Yeah, that's fair. He's like got just enough fuzz on him that you're like, oh, cute. I love that when they meet him, he's hurt and he's like giving him the speech. And Rachel, stupid ass Rachel, she goes, it's okay. Cassie knows a lot about animals. And Marcos is like, rude. You just called him an animal. I mean, it's we're, like we're animals though. We are, but you wouldn't, if you found some, like, a hurt woman on the street, you wouldn't say, like, my friend knows a lot about animals. She can help you. <laughs> okay, maybe the phrasing isn't great, but the idea is good that, like, you, like if I were hanging out with, like, a vet and I found a hurt person, I'd be like, okay, yeah. I know you're not, like, a human doctor, but you're probably going to be better than me who works at a tech company, like. Right. I get it, and it's. Phrasing, yes. though. Yeah, phrasing. And they, I mean, I get that we had to learn that Casey knows a lot about animals. It was just one of those lines that's like, it's just like out of nowhere, like, I am a vet. It's like, no one even was talking about that. <laughs> Is there a doctor on this plane? He's like, it's me, it's me. And they're like, sir, you're a doctor of literature. Please sit down. Yeah, that's what it feels like for plot movement. <laughs> but anyway. So they have to touch his cube. Yeah. And it's glowy and really good visual effect. And then they just like touch it and like stand there for an awkward amount of time. And they're like, that's it. It's been completed. Where yeah. like, the cube could have like turned <laughs> off or something. Like something should have happened. Just turned off. Like, oh, that's done. They all kind of look around. They're like, and then like they take their hands off. They're like, okay, I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. If you could turn into any animal right at this moment, what would you turn into? I don't think I would. <laughs> What if in the future there were a way that you could like download your brain into other like containers basically and you could like be an animal or whatever? Like I don't think that's crazy. I mean it's crazy, but I don't mm. think it's <laughs> mm. anyway. My point was I realized that I would not be able to be carnivorous, like even in animal form. So I was like, I guess I'll just be a bunny. <laughs> I don't know what else I could really do. I mean, I would for sure want to be a bird just to fly around. But then you got know. to eat worms. I mean, you could eat whatever you wanted. It's not like you have to eat worms. You could eat a potato. <laughs> Just like a grackle eating a potato, I'm like, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be a bird. I mean, if I'd be like, I want to be a dog because I love dogs. But then all you're doing is sitting there like you would as a human anyway. But like you get tummy rubs. That's true. No one, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I want that like as a human, like just strangers rubbing my tummy, but like as a dog, no. it'd be nice. I don't want to be treated like a pregnant lady who people feel like they can just touch your belly. What's like a very, a lion where everything just kind of like leaves you alone, but you just get to like lay in the sun and run really fast. I feel like there's a scene in this show where somebody like touches a lion and they're like very scared to do it, you know, yeah. or something or like a cheetah or something that they like, they're like, oh, I need to be able to turn into you because I'm in a zoo and I have to get away. And it's so cool. I love the idea that you touch an animal, you get their DNA all over your little stinky hands. And there's and like a weird like noise. Yeah. They're always like, whoa, that was wild. <laughs> Does it get better? Okay. So I guess we should like, we can get to the transforming. They get, they touch the cube and then they find out that they can turn into any animal that they have touched. And then is it like two hours is like, if you go past that, then 
you're stuck in animal form forever. Which would be really hard because as a human, I have trouble being like, okay, I have 20 minutes. I can get this chore done. Like I always overload and like really overestimate how much I can do. And so like, if you're like half animal brain, half human brain, like it'd be really easy to like accidentally go over. Oh yeah. Because you can't wear a watch. (laughs) Maybe they could just like keep necklace watches nearby. Mm, Yeah, probably. Okay, this feels like a good time to tell you this piece of trivia. Okay. Okay, so in the books, the clothes you're wearing either fall off of you or get destroyed, depending on, like, if you're being a big animal or a little animal. Okay. Like, you don't get to wear your clothes as an animal. So then in the books, when you transform back into a human, you're just naked. Okay, so I guess in the show, they made it more like you you just, like, transform, like, you get to keep your clothes. But I guess that makes sense in the show. I'm glad they did that in the show because I hate when it's, yeah. like, a whole plot point. I mean, it's interesting enough to say, like, I mean, first of all, it makes sense. And yeah. second of all, it's interesting enough to say, like, okay, I have to find a, a, a good spot to transform back. It can't just be, like, wherever. It can't just be in a bathroom somewhere because then, like, you're not going to have clothes. You have to, like, make it somewhere, which is a lot more intense. I guess it works more in the book because, like, in books, there's more, like, implied action since they're not having to show you everything. Yeah. Because, like, I could just imagine each show is, like, a half hour long or whatever, like, 22 mm-hmm. minutes with commercials. And so it would be really annoying if every episode they had to be, like, oh, no, we have to go find a safe spot. Or, like, we have to have yep. – st- like, it, I'm glad they didn't have to, like, waste time dealing with that. But, like, it makes sense to have it in the book because you're not really constrained by time and, like, visuals. Right. Yeah. So, like, I guess – but, yeah, you were saying it'd be really hard to, like, know when two hours was, let alone have to find a spot within two hours. Especially then, like 1998 would have been way before everybody had cell phones in their pockets. Because if if you and I were there and I was like turning into an animal, you'd be like, okay, I'm going to set a timer. And like you wouldn't transform into an animal and like be able to like time it really easily. Yeah. Yeah. And since they can't wear little Casios, they can't set stopwatch timer things. They they didn't have Apple Watches back then or anything. Yeah. So they learned that they can do this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the Andalites, I mean the Yurks come. And the Yerks are like looking for this Andalite that came to Earth and they're looking for these kids because now they have all these powers. And so this is like the flea scene where like the kids have to run away. Jake gets stuck in a tube and he transforms into a dog. And there's also a dinosaur bird. Yeah, but the dinosaur bird is bad. But very cool. And very bad. He's like hiding in a tunnel at some point with his dog. And the dog is very well trained at not barking at this like shit show happening. And, like, at one point, it's kind of like the scene in uh, Science when, like, the alien runs by at the birthday party because he's, like, in the tunnel. And then all of a sudden, these, like, weird lizard legs walk by it. But it was clearly just, like, human legs inside of, like, costume. It was really (laughs) um, budget. It still creeped me out, though, because it, like, somehow made it creepier that it was just, like, a human being. Like, stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to, like, reach out and grab the bird and then transform into the bird but that would have been a bad idea i like that he transformed into his dog because like how excited would your dogs be if even just for like a little bit you were like running around with them as a dog you know how much fun i would have as a little dog with my dogs yeah so like his dog got to experience that and i bet his dog was like super excited yeah lola would like lose her little mind yeah we would have placed so much tug of war (laughs) that's all we would do and she's like, can't beat me now. We're on the same level. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tie game. And you, I bet like it'd be hard too because you're just like new at being a dog. So you'd be like, not know how your jaws work. And she'd be like, sucker. <laughs> I don't know how my jaw works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is fun because we get to see him. Okay. What do you think about the transformations? Like the, the effects? Pretty good. Yeah, it's like pretty standard. Like werewolf, like transforming. So it was fine. I think for the time, this is the best I've seen. But I guess if you pay attention, every shot of them transforming is a still frame. Like it's just a photo (laughs) that they do like a time lapse in like Photoshop or something, you know? Yeah. I don't think it stands out one way or the other. I will say that it was like uh, my cats, like if I have, this is weird. So I had to do a neti pot like two weeks ago and I didn't know how to do it and it felt weird. So I was like making like sad noises, I guess, while I did it. And like my cats just like ran up and were like, are you okay? What's wrong? And we're like pushing their heads into me and like trying to make sure everything was cool. Like this guy is like transforming into a dog. And every time they're like transforming into an animal, they start like whimpering or making that animal noise. And the dog's just kind of like, oh, okay. 
this is fine. Like is the weird. dog didn't bark at the scary stuff. He's not reacting to his owner and being in like pain and making like dog pain noises. Like, is he okay? Yeah. It's like they had to have the dog around for this point to, for him to turn into a dog. But it's, yeah, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, this dog should be barking. So <laughs> it was kind of like chill as hell. Yeah. It was kind of a fine line between, okay, he has to be there. And like this dog doesn't, has no reason being there. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, it was the the effects were fine. They didn't really stand out. Like I obviously mentioned, I haven't seen this before. Like they didn't stand out to me as being like bad or good. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, that's how transformations are shown on shows, like new yeah. and old. I was very nervous for them. I was like, if these are bad, oof, I don't know. <laughs> that's gonna be the point where I cannot watch this show. Yeah, they were pretty all right though. What if it was just like it turns into like a puppet momentarily? Like the shows where you can really see like when somebody's like jumping and it's just clearly like a fake. Yeah. They do like a quick claymation of it and then like move on. That would be cool actually. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. It'd be an artistic choice, but it wouldn't really match the vibe of the show, I guess. Mm -mm. But yeah, he turns into the dog and then like he disappears and all of his friends have already like way left. Yeah, they're gone. And then I don't blame him. No, I mean, you gotta run. But then they they show up at school the next day and they're all at the dinner table or the lunch cafeteria table, whatever. <laughs> and they're like talking about it and they're like, Tobias, didn't he try to give you a disc? Didn't the Andalite alien try to give you a disc? And Tobias is like, I never dropped it. And they're like, you still have it? And he's like, I never took it. Like, Tobias. I don't like Tobias. He's creepy and he keeps giving every animal the eyes. Maybe like, I might enjoy it too much. <laughs> What yeah. have you been doing in your free time, Tobias? Tobias is a tease. I no, he's a serial it. killer. So yeah, he, but so now the whole point is, is that there's a really important disc that for some reason Tobias just didn't bother to take because he's too good. And that they have to find it. And that's part one. It's a two-parter. No, it's not because their principal is oh, an yeah. analyte, is a, is a yurt. Okay, we'll get more into it in the second episode or second part or whatever. We watched both of them because it was like part one to part two, which I don't like when shows do that for pilots i'm okay with it for pilots because my idea my, or my thinking is that like the first episode should be long you have a lot to set up i just would be annoyed if it were like aired on separate nights where i'm like i don't know if i like this show or not you can't just leave it on a cliffhanger for like the yeah first that's episode. true i bet they had to i bet that i bet what they would always do is show these back to back but they had to split it up because nickelodeon made them like say you only have 30 minutes per episode you don't get an hour long one yeah, I guess I'm with pilots too. Usually you like make them and then sell that. So they didn't know what channel they would be on, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with it now. But anyway, we'll get it shown more in the part two, but they kind of hint at it in part one. It's like a very like don't trust authority because they might be corrupt. Perfect. Yeah. Because like the principal, they're like, can we trust him? We don't know if we can go to him for help. And then part two there's like the cops are helping the bad guys look for the disc and they're like what if we can't trust cops and i'm like wow timely that's great i know that, that fit perfectly and it, it's like it's so relatable as a kid to be like my principal is a mean evil person and then like when you grow up you're like oh my principal was just like doing his job and he probably hated it because he had to deal with children all day you i know? don't uh, I was like probably a dweeb, but I always was pretty okay with my principals, like save for middle school, but I don't think you're allowed to like your middle school principal because you're like adult or dweebs. Yeah, no, yeah, I, but no, that's fair. But it, it's just like sort of the idea that every, every like TV show goes with that like your principal is like stuck up and, you know, like yeah. stuffy. A narc. Yeah, a narc. Part two, Jake is looking for the disc at the alien crash site. It's true. That's what he's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, he like goes there by himself. Dummy. A stupid idiot. <laughs> Jake has a hero complex. I'm not for it. Ugh, that's another thing that happens like later in this episode. They, they do that thing where they decide he's the leader. They're like, do you know what? There's not enough representation for white teen boys as the main protagonist. I you was going to do say. This, Jake, please. Yeah. Yeah, Tobias, Marco, Rachel, and Jake show up at Cassie's where she happens to live at an animal reserve. Good though, right? Convenient. You want Convenient. that time. If you yeah. get hurt as an animal, I, I guess like in there, if they could get to the vet very quickly, because I'm just like, um, if you're a teen and you get injured and you have to be like, oh yeah, I have bullet wounds. Can you just fix it, please? You don't want to answer those questions. I have bullet wounds. I was reading about it and it said any injuries they had as an animal, once they transformed back, would be gone. 
because oh. they were back into their own body. But I remember somebody getting like really hurt as an animal and then transforming back and then being injured still. I don't remember that, you know, it's like vague yeah. memory, but that's, that's what I know. Well, cause like, yeah, then there would be no stakes. Like there's no risk yeah. aside from like getting kidnapped. If you can just tell it, maybe once you get hurt as an animal, it's really, cause they, so at this part, Cassie is turned into a horse. One of them turns into a rat and then one turns into a cat and the cat tries to eat the rat. The and the rat freak the cat freaks out or the rat freak oh my god the rat freaks out because the cat's starting to chase him even though it's like his friend as a cat and so they make a big deal of like you have to fight the animal brain and like the animal body and you have to like use your wits i guess if you got hurt as an animal like if you're in pain it'd be harder to like transform back because you would just be like your animal brain would be like going crazy yeah that's a big plot device in this show too is that when you're an animal, you're fighting the animal instincts. If you're like an animal with like hardcore instincts, like say like a cheetah or a lion, I bet that's a lot harder to control. So depending on what animal you are, you know, or maybe even how stupid or smart that animal is, that might, yeah. you know, if you transform into a worm and they're like single celled organisms. Oh not. God, that'd be like the most, I mean, that'd be good for hiding, I guess, but. But you'd be, you'd be like half stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, You'd feel like, like half barely, of your brain was shut off. Yeah, they're like barely animate. Also, that would be so scary being a worm because then you go into the ground, it's very claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah, think of like what would be like the worst animal to transform into. Like, do you think can they turn into like insects? I don't know. I do, I bet I bet mammals. I do remember there was one where they turn into a dolphin. That'd be scary though, because then like, what if you accidentally swim too far out and then you're almost at the two hours? But if you turn into a human, you'll drown. I know. Or, yeah, that would be so fun. Yeah, it's Cassie. She turns into a bottlenose dolphin. What if you were just like a whale and then it's just they're slow? <laughs> and you're like, this is not as cool as I thought it would be. I mean, it'd be so cool for a while just to be a whale. Are you kidding me? And if you're these kids and Cassie has an animal reserve, why are you picking one animal? Why aren't you going and touching every single animal before you go on your mission? And why aren't we making Cassie the leader? Yeah. Girls are, <laughs> girls are too emotional to be leaders. <laughs> well, she knows the most about animals. She's very smart. Uh, so this is where you find out. They like, okay, we're going to go back and we're going to try to look at the the factory and try to find the disc that Tobias did not drop. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, and they're like, we can't go back. They'll see us. And the, then their leader is like, we can go back if we're animals, which is probably why he's the leader. No, because in the first episode, when he turned into a dog, they're like, oh, this isn't who we're looking for. It's just a stupid dog. And then the other guy was like, no, it might be like a kid with the power to transform. Get him. So like being Mm. an animal, like Tobias is, or not Tobias, Jake is the only one who is there to hear them say, like, he's the only one that knows that they know kids can turn into animals and that they should have a lookout. And, like, I was waiting for him to bring it up and be like, oh, we need to make sure we're, like, birds or something that's, like, less obvious than, like, normal. A dog. Yeah, Yeah, like a a pet. The dog they already saw, yeah. And then the cat, they were like, you don't look like a stray. You look like a house cat. Here's some dirt. (laughs) Yeah, it's where you just need, like, Mm -hmm. an ugly friend to transform (laughs) into an ugly cat. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, an ugly friend. Oh, you'd make an ugly cat. Yeah, well, good. (laughs) <laughs> um yeah so they do that they go to the site and then like the rat and the cat get stuck and like they get trapped because they know who they are and then tobias comes in as an eagle and like flusters the principal and then like the kids run free and in my head the eagle just like drops an american flag over the, <laughs> <laughs> the bad guys to like trap them like a giant tarp this is america this is my weapon It's my freedom. (laughs) He, like, drops the flag and, like, fireworks go Uh, off around it. Yeah. Is he an eagle or a hawk? I couldn't tell. I think he's a hawk. Okay. Well, I mean. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. They get the disc. (laughs) Right? Do they? Yeah, they do. Oh, and then I watched the next episode a little bit, too. (laughs) Uh, Give us, to tell us really quickly about the next episode. Um, Okay. So it starts to get cool because now they start to suspect their own, like, family members of being infected and so they just start getting paranoid and they start kind of fighting with each other and they're like your dad is infected he's acting weird and they're like your brother's infected because he walked in on us trying to like figure this disc out and normally he would have nothing to do with us but he was really interested in what we were doing today and it's just like it just gets really cool and like big and then they meet this alien friend 
called Axe. And Axe is an alien that like transforms into a human that, that like helps them fight aliens. Oh my God, it's so good. Like I really kind of might. Sorry, is there like a test that they can do to, because I think maybe that's what I liked about Buffy is that like you can tell pretty quickly who's a vampire because like you never see them during the day and stuff, I guess. Oh uh, yeah. But they have like any way that they can for sure find out that whoever isn't infected with the ear wormies? I don't think so. I don't I think that. that's the thing. It's cool because it's just like you figure it out when they do something really evil or villainous, you know? And it's like, oh my God, we they, we were right. But how are we supposed to prove it? It's good. Okay, it's very I kind good. of like that And if we're looking at it as like an analog to like teach kids to not blindly trust authoritarian like figures because like you can't know if somebody's good or bad until they do something good or bad yeah yeah i might have to like look into watching more of this it's just there are just some really cool scenes that i remember like them like putting worms in people's ears and stuff and it's like as a kid when you're watching it it's kind of horrifying it seems like it didn't go on for that long too so i feel like it wouldn't be like a ton of time for you to go back and rewatch it i think it's two seasons so Two years. But like nine million books. Actually, it's time for a new game. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. We're going to play Higher or Lower. Okay. Can we you come get up with a cooler name? The Over Under. That's good. I like that. Good old okay. Over Under. <laughs> good old Over. Watch the Over and the Under. Um, you get three guesses to get the correct answer. And I'll tell you if you're high or low. And I'll give you a little hints. Maybe. We'll see how this goes. How many Animorph books were there, Lori? 47. You are just under. Damn it. For some reason, it popped in my head. I'm like, it has to be the answer. My cats told me, I guess. But you're like kind of close. Okay. Uh, 52. You're just a little <laughs> under. 53. You're just under. Oh, that was three guesses, though. <laughs> it was. There are 54 Animorphs books. Dang, I was so close. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot. It'd be cooler if there were 52, because then as a kid, you could read one a week and then, like, finish them in a year. That'd be a fun project. Yeah, that might be fun. But since there's more than 52, like, I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said they read them all in two days. I could see that. I reread Goosebumps sometimes, and it's literally like, well, going to sit down for 15 minutes. Yeah. Apparently, like, a lot of them were ghostwritten, especially at the end of the series, which I, makes sense. But I'm surprised that there was, like, a single author ever put on them, because it just, like, kind of reeks of, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, just a series that would have, like, different people writing everyone. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what I thought they were when I was a kid. I thought they were just, like, I never actually read the books, but I always thought they were, like, one-offs, where I was like, oh, I want to read a story about a dolphin, and you pick that one. Oh, I want to read a story about a dinosaur, so you'd pick that one. But that is not what they were. Yeah, because I'm, like, thinking about it, and it's, like, with Goosebumps, like, R.L. Stein is, like, notorious with them. Animorphs, like, there was never, like, like, I never read a series of unfortunate events, but I know that Lemony Snicket is, like, the author. With Animorphs, there's not, like, I looked it up just now, sorry, and it's Cather Catherine Applegate and Michael Grant. Like, nobody, Yeah. nobody knows that. I know. I did not know who the author was of these. Oh, God, these covers are so good, though. They're amazing. Okay, wow, well... That was Animorphs. Honestly, I expected you to hate this entirely, and it feels like you've kind of come around to it. <laughs> I, I've always loved the book covers. Okay. Like, but for the show-wise, I would suggest it. I feel like it's one of those, I ran into it with, I didn't watch a lot of like quintessential kid stuff. Like I didn't see the Goonies until I was much older. I didn't see Star Wars until I was like 19. And I feel like there's some stuff where it's fine. Like it's probably like mid-grade. Like it's not good and it's not horrible, but it's entertaining. Um, yeah. So I guess what I'm getting at is that this seems like one where if you watch it, it would be fun to revisit because it's fine. And with the nostalgia, make it great. Overall, I guess it just, I guess the big like thing is like, it feels like a very 90s sci-fi show. Yeah. So if you've watched it before, you'll probably enjoy watching it again. And if you didn't see it before, it's not horrible, but like there might be like watch Charmed or Buffy or X-Files or Xena, or, like more adult stuff might be higher budget. Point. Yeah. Eh, I, I don't know if the early seasons of those are necessarily mm. higher budget than any, but like they're all kind of that same like nineties camp sci-fi. So I think this is such a hidden gem. I was surprised at how many sort of like underlying messages we got with like the authority figures. Don't just trust the police. They might be bad. Don't just trust authority. They might be bad. 
it's really fun. I think the ideas in this are fun. Heck yeah, go back and revisit it if you're into sci-fi. Like, it's worth it. There's a reason Animorphs is like big. You know, it's cool. Go watch it. So I don't know. I'm glad I got to rewatch it. I'm I would have rather rewatched this than most any other Nick shows at this point. Maybe I'm watching Avatar right now. Oh well, obviously, other than Avatar. What else? That's all we do. We're done. That's it. We did it. Do you want to do the outro? <laughs> um, Lori, if you want to, mm. if you want to morph into a listener to a true fan of our podcast, <laughs> how can you do that, Brandon? Well, if they want to morph into a true fan, they can find us on social media. We are on Twitter at Pod and Together, Facebook.com slash Pod and Together. Email us at Pod and This Together at gmail.com. Please rate us on iTunes. Leave a review. It helps a lot. It makes our day. And we love you. <laughs>